Today, we are gonna go through a presentation on how one of our clients, Wyatt Beamer, makes over $76,000 a month in net profit with his lead generation agency by working with just two clients at a time. This stuff is extremely, extremely valuable. And if you can't sit down for a few hours and watch you and information like that, probably just makes sense for you to do something else with your time, because you are probably not really gonna make money anyways doing business in the internet. Go watch alpha male compilations on TikTok, you know? For everyone else who actually wants to learn how to do this exact stuff, we can get started. First of all, like I said, this is gonna be for people who are looking to build a B2B lead generation agency. We're gonna go through a case study on how Wyatt Beamer, who is one of our clients, makes over $76,000 a month in net profit. So after all expenses, running his B2B lead generation agency by working with only two clients. It's gonna be a step-by-step -step guide on how to vertically scale a lead generation agency to a six-figure run rate in 90 days with no past experience or case studies. Wyatt is a client of of ours from agentvelocity.io, our flagship program. So if you also want to get in there, you can just go ahead and book a call from this calendar link or just go to agentvelocity.io if that's something that you want to do. If you want to learn more about Wyatt's story, we also filmed a great interview on my YouTube channel, so you can find that as well. Just so you know that this stuff actually is legit before we invest a ton of time into it, I just want to go through a few, few results we have achieved. So here, first, figure one, a screenshot below showcases Wyatt booking 23 calls in 30 days for his client, resulting in over $20 million pipeline and $500,000 in closed deals. So Wyatt actually made $500,000 in 30 days for his clients through cold email. Here's the course that he has booked. Here's also figure two. So this screenshot showcases the commission seats and deals generated through the calls booked. So as you can see here, estimated after qualification, hundreds of thousands of dollars generated for his clients with his affiliate ID. And here also is a screenshot showcasing the monthly commission sheet provided by his second client. So his client is paying him like 60k from this amount of money generated. Also here is a figure four screenshot just showcasing our Slack conversation with Wyatt and him explaining his monthly expenses around the agency are 1.8k a month. So he has three team members plus some technology. He checked it out around 1.8k for all business expenses which are pretty crazy crazy margins like 99% margins and there is a specific reason why that's something that we're gonna run through in this presentation a bit later on. Just so you know that this hasn't been a one hit wonder. It hasn't only worked for Wyatt. It has worked for Jack Goss, one of our clients, closing $40,000 in new revenue for his lead generation agency in three days. And Jack actually just sent us a message yesterday saying that he has closed $250,000 during the summer through cold email. So it hasn't only worked for Wyatt. It has also worked for Jack or for Tony. There's a screenshot showcasing our client Tony scaling to 38.5k a month plus performance by working with four clients. So close to 15k deal a month for 12 months. That's like $180,000 contract. Here's seven 7.5k a month for 12 months. Here's 4k plus some call performance plus 3 to 4k per acquired client. And here also is her first deal. So close to her first deal for 12,000 a month for 12 months. So once again, like 140k contract. So it has worked for a lot of people. It has worked for Tony from zero to 40k in eight months. Wyatt went from $500 a month to over 70k a month in nine months. Christian and Huey, absolutely amazing guys. Went from zero to 25k a month in 91 days. Elliot and Emil went from zero to 25k a month in 98 days. Michael Choi from 0 to 20k a month in 120 days. Daniel Sanagard went from 0 to 25k a month. Went in 8 months. Oliver Scarnield went from 0 with a failed SMMA agency to 35k a month in 18 weeks. We have done an interview with each one of these people on my YouTube channel. So if you wish to check them out, you can find them on my YouTube channel. We have like 3 times more of these interviews done. I just haven't updated the document because we get them so much that I never have time to update these things. The goal of this presentation is to show you how to replicate why Beamer's success and build a lead generation agency that generates $76,000 a month in pure profit as fast as possible. Also, to make sure that you are in the right place, we are just going to go through a few things who this video actually is made for. This is for you if you currently run a social media marketing agency, a lead generation agency, or any remote service-based digital marketing business and you struggle with charging premium prices as scaling past $10,000 a month. This is also for you if you have a background in sales, software, or marketing throughout your career and you're looking for a vehicle to triple your income using skills that you have already gathered. Or if you want to take control of your life and make $10,000 a month from anywhere in the world on your own terms by running a high quality lead generation agency, then you should stick around. Or if you are already running a lead generation agency, but you have trouble signing high paying clients and dealing with results that make them jump up and down, then stick around because we're going to go through that. Or if you are just looking to run a lead generation agency, already run one, and you're struggling with picking a profitable niche where you can position yourself as an expert and only work with cream of the crop clients, if that's you, 
then stick around. Or if you are just stuck in the flywheel of charging low prices and working with low quality clients in your agency, this is perfect for you. If you have bought any lead generation agency courses or pretty much any agency marketing courses in the past and they have given you no value and you're looking for something precise that will give you exactly what you need to succeed, this is for you. So this is pretty much if you have any courses or anything, this is literally going to show you how to do that stuff, but for free. If you're also signing clients, but you have no idea how to deliver a good service that justifies what you're charging, this is for you. If you work a job and you want to build a lead generation agency that will serve as a cash flow vehicle that will allow you to quit your job and create freedom for yourself, then this is for you. If you just feel that you suck at sales and don't have a consistent and reliable sales process to close the people you speak with, this is for you. If you're willing to trade time, effort, energy, attention, and focus on achieving whatever goals you may have for a lead generation agency, then this is for you. If you just want to take advantage of the underlying lead generation problem that 63% of businesses struggle with and get some financial security during these uncertain times, then stick around. If you just feel fed up with investing money, time, and effort in the new business opportunities while being afraid you'll never feel your potential and stay stuck living paycheck to paycheck for the rest of your life. If you want to follow your passion and know that you need a cash flowing asset first to make those dreams come true. Or if you have tried other business models like SMMA, dropshipping, or affiliate marketing in the past, but you didn't see success that you signed up for, then stick around. If you are just like a lot of other people and you're afraid of letting your parents, friends, and partner down and suspect there is an easier way to make it in the online business game, then stick around. Or if you just want to drive a G-Wagon or a Porsche 911 4S, then this is a perfect video for you. When you just make enough of money, you can do that. If you feel fed up with making excuses and bouncing to every new shiny object that comes to your way, then stick around. If you want to build a sick lead generation agency, hire a team of A players, and finally make those dreams come true. And last but not least, if you have spent last month studying, buying courses, and learning, and you're finally ready to take action, then stick around. Also, just to keep in mind, this is not going to be useful for people who have zero experience or understanding of marketing, business, sales, or software. So if you are completely green, you have never done anything of these four things in your life, then this is not going to be a good way for you to spend your time. Also, this is not going to be a good way for you to spend your time if you are a lazy person who just makes excuses or the one who just thinks that work is a four letter word. So the underlying truth here, something that is extremely important for you to understand to actually succeed. You can definitely scale a lead transition agency to $76,000 a month net profit by working with only two clients and a small team of three people if you have the correct information and you follow the right fundamental principles in the right manner. But sadly, a significant number of aspiring agency owners often misunderstand the blueprint for successfully scaling a service-based business. Rather than focusing on providing value to their existing clients, they engage in a rat race against other service providers in the market, trying to secure as many low-quality clients as possible for $1,000 to $3,000 a month deals. You might have been there engaged in that rat race if you have ever tried to run an agency. While this route might get them some results at first, it inadvertently sets the stage for accidentally building a golden prison. Remember, all that glitters is not gold after all. As they add more clients, the operational complexities balloon out of control, the workload increases exponentially, headaches multiply, and what was once a dream business rapidly morphs into a daily onslaught of overwhelming challenges. The illusion of growth turns into a nightmarish reality of stress and unmanageability, and in the face of such mounting pressures, many just pull down the shutters, branding the agency model as broken or even more disheartening, saturated. So if you have ever heard that the agency model is broken or it's saturated, it's probably been from someone who has experienced this same situation. The pain and disillusionment of this perceived failure casts a long shadow over their entrepreneurial spirit, leaving them disheartened and reluctant to ever build something again. And this mistake can be visualized simply with the graph below. So there is a number of clients and there's revenue. And a lot of people end up going with the horizontal scaling route of just achieving a higher revenue number by getting more clients when there's an option to vertically scale and just increase the revenue without getting on any more clients. So in the graph above, horizontal scaling is a scaling method most aspiring agency owners follow. They try to increase their revenue by increasing the number of clients, which leads to more headaches, lower margins, and never-ending chase for clients. But then the vertical scaling line showcases strategy that I'm going to teach you on this presentation. Actually skyrocket your revenue without taking on any more clients. When you're scaling your agency vertically, your main goal is to increase the value delivered to your clients, which logically results in your clients being able to pay you more. When you scale vertically, your margins stay high, you don't need to bring on multiple clients, and you don't have to compete against other agencies in your marketing by acquiring more clients. And I know right now you're probably thinking, Levy, how do I deliver more value to my clients? And it's actually fairly simple. In fact, anyone can do it with the right information. By the way, if you don't know me, my name is Levi Erla. And back in September 2021, I had 62 cents in my bank account and I had to sell my iPad for $100 to get food. And this is the exact picture 
try posting on Facebook Marketplace to sell my iPad. I'd spent the last five years trying to build an online business that would give me a complete location and time freedom and let me pursue my entrepreneurial side. I worked at different sales companies as a sales rep and a team leader during this time. And I got my first sales job at the age of 14 and it turned out to be a great career path for me. And I wasn't a natural born salesperson. It didn't come easy. I struggled a lot when starting, but I stuck with it. I kept grinding, doing overtime and learning from people better than me and managed to become good at it. At the age of 17, I was managing a 15 person sales team. We were selling B2C electricity contracts going door to door. It wasn't always fun. We were knocking on doors through the winter. And since I lived in Finland back then, winters are extremely cold there and minus 30 degrees Celsius wasn't a rare sight to see. During this time, I always knew that I didn't want to take the traditional route of studying in school, getting a degree, working on a five and retiring at 65 while seeing others pursue their dreams around me. So building an online business was the only thing that made sense in my head. I spent my high school years working in sales and trying to build various online businesses because I just knew that I wouldn't go to college. And the only real education I can be proud of is my education at the Reserve Officer School of Finland's military, where I graduated as second lieutenant in military and strategic leadership. So I tried to run drop shipping stores, build a social media marketing agency, so SMMA, learn affiliate marketing and sell different low value services as a freelancer. Even though I saw some traction with some of these models, it wasn't what I signed up for. I just needed more. So after buying a lot of courses, watching endless amounts of YouTube videos, reading books for five years and still not seeing success, I was naturally extremely disappointed. I had spent all my time trying to find that one quote unquote secret, but I just needed that one clear step-by-step -step framework that I could execute. And since I still hadn't found it, I knew that I needed to create it myself. I didn't want to make excuses anymore. I was ready to take the hard route and learn to do it myself. In September 2021, I joined a marketing agency as an outsourced sales consultant and decided to take matters into my own hands and run a series of experiments to get them leads, sales, and of course, make the whole system profitable. I immediately started running cold emails and automated LinkedIn outreach campaign for them. They were in a really typical situation that many marketing agencies find themselves in. They had no specific customer profile, no idea what their best service was. So they were offering literally everything. They had like 35 services and they didn't have a predictable way to get new leads and clients. So they are preying on the referral gods to bring them some new clients. While we were building their outreach system, we also started figuring out what is the best customer segment to focus on and what do we offer them. It was my first time doing it probably, so it wasn't the perfect execution, but it worked. And here is an image of a screenshot from their CRM. So here you can see this month, 16.6 thousand euros, and then the next month, 88,800 euros. As you can see, after the first few months of setting up the foundations and building a powerful outreach system, we started growing extremely fast. In December 2021, we did 16.6 thousand euros in new deals. And in January 2022, we did 88,000 euros in new deals. And that is a 434% increase in new revenue in a month. It literally blew my mind. Weeks that were at the end of the day, super simple to execute had given this company a new direction. They knew who they should sell to and what to sell them. They also knew how they would get more clients predictably. I saw a huge opportunity once again. So at the end of December 2021, I decided to go out on my own and start my lead generation agency. My strategy ended up working so well that in the brief period of only 92 days, I was already doing 13,000 euros in a month. And in six months, I was doing over 40,000 euros. So here's just a few screenshots of my bank accounts. Here's the screenshots that I got on my third month. So 13,000 euros. Here's the money that I made on my six months. So over 40,000 euros. And here's also some results that we have gotten through cold email. So if you understand anything about cold email, you probably know that hitting these reply rates actually makes a lot of money. I'm not sharing this to impress you, but in 2022, I made over $380,000 doing this. Traveled around the world, $8,000 dinners and stayed at $5,000 a week hotels while running my dream business. So this is just one location that we are stayed in, in Uluvatu in Bali. It was really nice, a really great villa. It was like 20k a month. I spent a week there with my girlfriend. And here's also a gift of me making 347,000 euros in 2022, which is $383,000. I've also been featured in national publications like Yahoo Finance, Business Insider, Bloomberg, Digital Journal, and Market Watch, etc. while building an online presence of 30,000 loyal followers combined. On the 8th of May 2022, I started posting my results on Twitter and sharing my learnings. And naturally, a lot of people started messaging me asking for help in building a lead transition agency. At the beginning of July, I did over 70 free consultations to understand the biggest issues and how to create a framework to solve them. So this is what my calendar looked like for three and a half days. It was pretty painful. I was just doing 12 hours of calls, 11 hours of calls every single day, tired after doing that. So I was just pretty much talking to everyone who was looking to build a lead generation agency and figuring out, okay, why are they not getting it to work? And why did I get it to work? And what is the difference? I had some amazing conversations with my followers and learned in depth the main problems and common bottlenecks that made it hard for people to succeed. And this leads us here. So I decided to help others and put together this document, which will lay out the exact four steps you need to take in 
in chronological order to replicate my success. Also, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one help in building a lead generation agency, you can just work with us at this link on Calendly or you can just go to agentvelocity.io and book a call through that. So the first activity that you need to start doing when you want to achieve the results is you need to get your first three to five clients in a broad B2B market. The first thing you need to do is start offering lead generation services to a broad segment of any B2B market. A big mistake a lot of aspiring lead generation owners make is trying to build the perfect agency before even starting. They spend months on picking the perfect niche, they create six different variations of their offer, they spend days copy pasting someone else's via sell script just to realize that the market doesn't want what you're selling and all your hard preparation was pretty much for nothing. To ensure we don't end up wasting time and get traction as fast as possible with our lead generation agency, you'll need to keep everything extremely simple in the beginning. How do we do this? Instead of picking a super specific niche, you'll start by targeting a broad B2B industry. Instead of spending weeks or even months creating the perfect quote unquote irresistible offer using Alex Ramos's book, he'll create a general revenue focused offer based on simple market research. And instead of spending weeks creating an extremely beautiful funnel with all the bells and whistles, you'll create a simple landing page in 15 minutes with a Google Doc presentation via cell. And the same goes for our client acquisition as well. Simple cold email campaigns with high volume and a two call sales process focused on the logical arguments of your offer instead of all the fancy closing tricks you've learned from Wolf of Wall Street. So there's no point in you going out there and reading all the Jordan Belfort books and all of the crazy sales tactics books and trying to close with that. You just want to focus on actually finding an offer that resonates with the market. I'll show you exactly how to do each one of these things, starting with the most important one, which is picking a niche. You're going to be picking a broad B2B industry as your first niche. The big mistake a lot of aspiring agency owners make is they try to go too specific at the first niche. When you niche down too specific, you're just basically making a guess, closing your eyes and hoping you hit the bullseye. The reason why this is so crucial is the fact that business is always based on feedback and running feedback loops. So we have eight different steps. What's at the beginning of the feedback loop affects the remaining parts of the equation. If you screw up in the beginning of the feedback loop, all the feedback we get from the remaining parts of the machine will not be accurate. So if we screw up here on the niche section, we don't really know what's happening here on the delivery or on lead generation. If you already don't have immense knowledge and understanding of the niche, it is impossible for you to know what the niche actually struggles with and how it needs to be solved. So when you start out broad, you can get data based on outreach campaigns, discovery calls, and client projects. After you have enough of data and knowledge on the niche, you can exclude its unprofitable aspects while doubling down on its profitable elements. So an example of this is if you have a 3% closing rate, you might think that you suck at sales. Maybe you do, or maybe you didn't correctly niche down, or maybe your offer just sucks. Maybe your funnel is not lighting up your prospects. You don't know because each part of the business needs to be dialed in to have a working machine. Each bottleneck needs to be addressed from the start to finish in the correct order. Otherwise, the data we get from everything that comes after may be inaccurate, causing you to make the wrong decisions and stay stuck spinning your wheels trying to address the wrong problems. So how does this process actually work? What you do first is you write down your experiences, your interests and your advantages and start piecing them together. Think about past jobs, things what you have studied or business ventures you have tried to make work. You'll probably understand something well enough to start working in that niche. So let's say your experience, interests and advantages look like this. So you have done some coding, you really like gym and fitness, you like cats and you like Twitter. And some of your advantages are that you speak German, you have a good hairline, you have gone to a coding bootcamp and you bench press two plates. A lot of stuff don't really matter. Liking cats and Twitter doesn't really matter. And gym and fitness doesn't really have a B2B aspects. And your good hairline and two plate bench press won't really help you when building a lead generation agency. They're dope things, but they don't really help us in the situation. So here we can just see that software and coding is a clear commonality here. So what I do is I'd go for software development companies as the first niche if this is what your experiences, interests and advantages look like. Also, since you speak German, it would make sense to go after the German market since you can reach out to them in their native language and you stand out a lot this way. To ensure that we don't waste our time in the niche that would never work, you need to do some surface level market research. You just need to figure out do they struggle with lead generation? Are there enough of companies in the market? What are they doing right now for client acquisition? And are there any trends in the market we can take advantage of? Of course, you'll find a lot of information while doing outreach and taking discovery calls, but it is always good to check those few variables. So here we can see a picture of a search I did using prospecting tool called Apollo.io. In the screenshot above, we can see that 900 software development industry contacts in Germany are hiring for sales roles. So we have different roles here. We have personal location, company location is Germany, and we have also currently hiring for sales representative, SDR, salesman, etc. And we see that, okay, there's 900 companies that fit this criteria. So how many of those do you think would be interested in a service that helps them in the most challenging part of the B2B sales process? Because they're already hiring for salespeople. So they're clearly looking to just increase their sales. And here is a screenshot without the actual hiring filter. So if we take away the hiring filters, we get 29 
9,000 contacts that fit that search in German market. So if you get 0.01% of that contact pool as a client, you can make $30,000 a month realistically. Wyatt is making 76K a month in net profit with two clients. So you don't really need that many clients when you do it the vertical scaling way. Based on this research, we know that going after software development companies in Germany would be a great idea if you already have experience in the field of software and coding and you speak the native language. For other people, it won't be as good. Now we have our first niche picked out. Remember that this is just a starting point for the agency and not your final niche. It's going to change a lot as you go. And when you nail your niche down and you actually do it properly using this process that I just went through, you can find a service market fit in one to three months while getting paid for learning and researching. It will take way less time to sign your first client. After following this process, it took me 12 days to be exact. Sales calls become easier because you understand the specific pain points that the niche is currently struggling with. So you can precisely describe them to the prospect when you're on calls, positioning you as an authority figure who clearly understands the niche. Service delivery becomes streamlined because you're working with the same type of customer and solving the same problem every time. Because you're working with the same avatar every time and the service delivery is streamlined, you'll produce better results for your clients. And because you produce better results for your clients, you collect better case studies, which helps you get more clients, charge higher prices and have less churn. And want to know how I know? Because that is precisely what happened to me when I did things the new way. And I've seen it happen countless of times with others I work with. And it will happen to you if you follow this process. So now we have our niche dialed in. We need to actually start creating general revenue focused offer. The offer is the heart that pumps blood and oxygen in the rest of the body. The entire business is built upon it. When you have an irresistible offer, the remainder of the process flows very easily and naturally. It's choosing to have a smooth sailing rather than an uphill battle. And then when the offer is good, you can still mess up in various aspects of the business and people will still buy. So if you go back to the feedback loop, the eight different steps, if you just simply nail these two in the beginning, everything else will become disproportionately easier. So much so that you should allocate a lot of your time and attention to making sure that you nail both of these core aspects down. If you want to create a banger offer, we first need to understand what it is. A good offer is a clear transformation with a measurable end result, time frame, and a roadmap, and it needs to be crafted to solve the exact pain points, struggles, failures the prospect has experienced. What does a good offer look like? Of course, this depends a lot on the niche you specifically work in, what kind of companies you work with, and what you focus on while delivering your service. There's multiple different things. But for example, if we work with US-based startup founders, in the tech industry who have just raised seed funding round, our offer could be, we help US-based seed stage tech startups achieve initial traction in your target market and scale to 6 million ARR using personalized code outreach at scale. And the thesis behind that offer is just a company called Start Engine that helps startups raise capital has reported that startups should raise a seed round before they are at the $3 million mark. So I'd assume that a lot of startups are at this stage or below. After raising the seed round, the founder's biggest goal is to prove that there is traction and demand for their product and achieve what we call the product market fit. Cold email lead generation would be the perfect service for this stage since it's one of the cheapest ways to acquire new customers while it also gets a lot of data in different customer segments and messaging angles. Of course, to be 100% sure on this, I'd have to talk to 10 to 30 startup founders at this stage, modify the offer based on their feedback and validate it by working with a startup that has raised a seed round recently. Since before having case studies showcasing those results, it is just an educated guess or in other words, a thesis. Let's say that I'd sign a client who matches that criteria and we'd see that their problem isn't getting traction in their market and it's actually finding the right market to focus on. Based on this feedback, I'd change my offer so it would be focusing on that aspect. And also, let's say I would help them go from 2 million ARR to 3.5 million ARR. I'd change my offer to we help US-based seed stage tech startups find the right target market to focus on and scale from 2 million ARR to 3.5 million ARR using personalized code outreach at scale. Also, just quickly notice how I use 3.5 million is our 3.5 M in doing this for the simple reason that the first number seems bigger, even though it's exactly the same. Also, as we are creating our offer, we need to make sure it resonates with our needs. I really recommend you to read Eugene Schwartz's book, Breakthrough Advertising, because in this book, Eugene Schwartz outlines the five stages of market sophistication and how we can identify the best level to place your product or service by understanding each stage. Market sophistication is the market level relative to your service, which is in our case, when we are starting out, cold email lead generation. So if the buyer is in a highly sophisticated, aka matured market, it's going to be much harder to convince with basic claims than the buyer in a relatively new and unexplored market, which is pretty much a less matured market. And as we go on, the market is getting more sophisticated or more matured, aka educated. So that, of course, changes how we want to market to them. The simplest way to find out your market sophistication level is look at your competitors and see what kind of claims they are using in their marketing. You'll also 
find it out by taking discovery calls with people in your market since they'll immediately tell you if they have heard of your service and offer or if it's something entirely new for them. If you're on level one, your customers have never seen or heard about your service before. You're pretty much a pioneer. You have no competition. Everyone is blown away and getting presented with your offer. Your cold emails work amazingly well and you're closing sales left and right. And this is a really great place to be. This stage doesn't last for long. When I started with my lead transition agency in the Finnish marketing agency space in 2021, I was in this situation. After three months of being in the market, I would literally just present my offer and people would be blown away. Like, damn, what is that? And how do I get it? And how much does it cost? Of course, there's a lot of things like you need to educate the market more. So they would ask, is it legal? Does anyone use email anymore? So you also need to do a lot of education if you're on level one, but still it's an amazing place to be. After three months of being in the market, I started seeing a lot of people copying what I was doing. And now like 19, 20 months later, everyone has heard the basic claims in the same market. So if you find yourself in a situation where you clearly are on level one, take advantage of it. It won't be this easy forever. At this stage, your marketing and sales are going to be easy. The market is unsaturated and completely fresh. So all you need is a simple straight to the point claim or an angle without any extra bells and whistles to get people interested in your offer. So for example, we generate more leads for a marketing agency. Level two means that others are picking up on what you're doing. They are seeing how well you are doing and they want a piece of the pie as well. Natural business competition. You are no longer alone in the market. Others are creating alternative offers and starting to compete with you. Because now your customers have alternative options to choose from, you need to explain to your claim. Make your offer bigger, better, faster, or cheaper. So for example, we generate 10 qualified sales calls for a marketing agency every month. At the level three, you are now competing with a lot of competitors. Their offers and services are similar to yours, and everyone is trying to one-up their offer by making their claims faster and bigger. The market has been blasted with a bunch of unrealistic claims, and everyone is getting skeptical about what you offer, even if your claims are the biggest in the market. Shouting louder no longer works. Your market has become sophisticated enough to recognize exaggerated claims and isn't easily influenced by this. Now you need to add credibility to your claims and you have to come up with a unique mechanism that no one else has. Unique mechanism, your percent needs to be logical. Your market is already skeptical about these claims. So if the unique mechanism doesn't make sense in their head, it won't work. So you just can't go out there and say that you have the triple X 1000 million verifier mechanism because people are not really going to logically understand what it means. Unique mechanism can be a software, a concept, a process, or an invention. For example, we generate 10 qualified sales calls for a marketing agency every month using personalized video outreach. And personalized video outreach is the unique mechanism in the example above. It's better than others. At level four, the market is extremely sophisticated. They have heard every big and fast claim, and they have seen all sorts of unique mechanisms your competitors have presented to the market, and they are getting bombarded with something quote unquote new on daily basis. Now to stand out from the crowd and show the market that your offer is best and most logical option to go with, you need to do the same thing you did when going from level one to level two, and you need to expand your unique mechanism claim. It is not enough to have a unique mechanism anymore. It needs to beat all the other unique mechanisms in the market. And at this point, the strongest unique mechanism wins the market. And for example, this could be we generate an extra $300,000 in new revenue for a marketing agency in the next six months by using AI powered personalized video outreach at scale, or we will give your money back. At level five, the market is filled with different versions of your offer and service. The buyers are extremely sophisticated to the marketing message out there and only respond to a certain level of marketing, which is level five. At this stage, it's not about the idea or the service. It's about the experience and emotional side. So how does your market feel and what experiences does your service offer them that they can't get anywhere else? For example, we will make you the coolest agency owner that everyone wants to have a lunch with in your next mastermind event. So as you can see, for your offer to work, you need to be matching the market sophistication level. If your messaging is at level one, but your market is at level four, you won't find resonance. It won't work. This can only be done if you understand the market at a deep level. So while you are taking these core calls and talking with people in your market about your lead trends and services, take note of these things and adapt your offer and messaging accordingly. Once we have sophistication nailed down, we'll also have to take market awareness into consideration. And once again, there are five different levels to this. And this is also from the breakthrough advertising book from Eugene Swart. So there's an unaware market, there's a problem aware market, the solution aware market, product aware, and also a most aware.
Denver market. We again have the five stages that Eugene explains in his breakthrough advertising book. And if your customer is unaware that they have a problem and you're selling to them on a product aware level, you'll miss the opportunity to get them as a customer. Of course, different prospects have different awareness levels, even if they are in the same market. But the key here is to find averages by talking to the niche and analyzing what stage the market is at. So if your market is entirely unaware that they have a lead transition and a client acquisition problem, they won't buy your offer if you are selling them 10 to 15 new qualified sales calls. Why would they? They don't even need it in their minds. Here you have two solid options to use. You can either market to them with an ultimate end result first. So for example, we generate an extra $300,000 profit in the next 12 months or less for a marketing agency. So even if they are not aware that they have a problem, they'll probably be interested in hearing what you have to say. Then when you get them on a call, you need to educate them on the potential they are missing out since they are not using cold email for lead generation and show them that you are the best option to start using it. Or you can do the option two, you can take the educational approach immediately. So hi, John, if you're not using cold email for getting new clients, you're probably missing out on hundred to $300,000 in extra profit you could be generating. Would you be interested in seeing how? With this approach, you first need to show them why your claim is true logically. After achieving that point, you can sell your service. And I truly like this one, creating a bunch of educational material and just educating people because education is also value. So you're delivering value to the client even before they have bought anything from you. And that really makes the sales process really smooth. The key is to find out the market awareness as soon as possible by talking to the market and marketing and selling to them in the right way. In our case, when we were selling a lead transition service to B2B companies, the main thing we need to take into consideration is how aware they are of the potential and if they're already doing any outbound marketing. The more traditional markets like accounting, ID management or insurance companies, for example, are used to working solely based on referrals and networking events and getting their leads that way. They cannot make the connection in their heads that outreach equals sales calls and that equals clients and that equals revenue. That's why selling outreach or sales calls doesn't resonate with them, at least at this point. They don't automatically connect those things to more clients and revenue. The location also has an effect on this. Some markets in different locations are not as up to date with the latest sales and marketing practices as others. So I have seen that the North European market is three to five years behind compared to the US market. And that's why the same outreach matches and offers don't just work there. This is what I mean when I talk about using positive feedback loops. You first need to talk to the market, get feedback on specific parts of your agency, and you loop back to the part and tweak it based on your feedback. So you have your offer, you show that offer to the market, then you get feedback on the offer, and then you tweak the offer based on the feedback gained. Simple. It's a self-sustaining loop and it spins forever. When your offer matches your niece's awareness and sophistication level, it will resonate way better with them and they will immediately understand the value of your offer. They also understand how it solves their most painful problem in the most efficient way. Hence, outreach and sales calls will be easier even with a three to five times higher price. And as a result, you will no longer be considered a commodity. You command higher prices, you make your sales calls easier, you work with better clients and ultimately have much better experience running your own business. For example, one of our students, Oliver, tried to run an SMMA agency for two years. His recurred month was $1,000 a month and after pivoting the lead generation, he still wasn't getting the results he was looking for. The main problem he had was his offer. He was offering something that everyone else was offering. He was a commodity. We took his offer and we recrafted it so it matched his niche's actual pain point and desired end result while making sure his wording of his offer matched the niche's awareness level. He launched his new campaigns, booked nine qualified meetings on the first day and scaled from zero to $17,000 a month in 35 days. Now he's doing over 35,000 euros a month through his agency. And here's just a quick picture of Oliver saying 5k deal signed plus a meeting fee and haven't decided yet. The prospect just said that he should decide what wanted to charge him. So notice how the client told Oliver to decide what he wants to charge himself after signing the deal and paying the 5,000 euro starting fee. This only happens when you are so valuable that the client doesn't care about the small pricing details. They trust Oliver more than they trust themselves on these topics since he's offering a transformation instead of 10 to 15 sales calls a month. Now, a few months later, he has gone and scaled to $30,000 a month with his Legion agency and he's doing over 35,000 euros right now a month. So that's closer to 40K. You also need to realize that the market offer and protocol is always dynamic. It changes as you go. And there's a lot of things that happen based on how the market resonates with the stuff that you provide. You learn the market better, you find problems and you get case studies and develop your protocol weekly. As you do that, you need to go back to your foundations and update them to match your knowledge and data. A good example of this is our customer, Tony J. She went through this process for five months, trying to find the perfect niche and offer combination. And after five months, something clicked and she posted all of these messages to our Slack channel inside 14 days. She went from zero to 23.5K a month in 14 days. She is right now doing over 40K a month. And you might spend a few months trying to find the fit, but then when niche and offer actually 
actually clicks, boom, it slides out and you are just gonna scale like a rocket. You also might be thinking, what if I don't have any experience in high level skills? Odds are you have some experience in some areas. Even if you're really good at non-business things like playing video games, you could leverage that niche to your advantage since you probably understand the market better than someone who doesn't have an Xbox. Or if you have gambled your life savings away in crypto, you're in a better position to work with crypto and a Web3 niche than the ones who invest in 5% ROI index funds. Also, you might be wondering, how do I know the market awareness and sophistication levels? And that comes from direct market feedback. You won't really know until you launch campaigns, hop on calls and hear from the market itself. And that's why the foundations are dynamic and always changing. You also might be thinking, what if I have a language advantage, but the total addressable market is very small? In these cases, it depends a little bit. But the ideal solution would be to find native clients that are open across borders with their targeting. This way, you'll have the advantage of being in a market with less competition and a clear advantage, but being able to target wider markets for a client and also, of course, test more. You also might be thinking, what if people are already selling good offers in the niche? Then you just differentiate yourself using a different mechanism. You change your messaging, you change your angle. There are many ways to circumvent this. Saturation is a complete myth and it only exists when you operate in a commodity land. The key here is to be involved with the niche, talk to the people inside the niche as much as possible, take feedback and collect data on what they actually need and want. This way, your offer will always be a home run since you're selling something that the people want to buy. I know it sounds extremely simple, but I see people messing up with this daily. How do I know which offers to sell? In the beginning, you need to get as much feedback from the market as possible to know what is the best offer to sell. You also look at competitors' offers and see what pain points and desires they are targeting. You reverse engineer the process and create something better. In the beginning, I advise you to go with a generic or in other words, a surface level thesis offer that you use to book this really calls in your niche. And then when you present your offer to your niche, you'll probably hear questions and statements like actually X has been easy for us, but the bigger struggle has been Y. It would be better if you did X instead of Y. You also help with X and Y. We could use help with those things as well. And then you take a note of those questions and statements and model your offer so it matches them as long as it just makes sense for you. Sometimes the market can ask for things that don't make sense, but you just need to find the balance. Also, you might be thinking, Levy, do I need a guarantee? And this is also really simple. When your protocol is logically an airtight case, guarantee is not needed, but still recommended. Guarantee is a math equation. By having this guarantee, will it make me more net profit after possible refunds? If yes, have a guarantee. If you're not sure, test it. And if the answer is no, it won't, then dial in your service delivery and maybe you just need to get better. Example guarantees here are 100% satisfaction guarantee for time frame X. So for the first two, three months, performance-based pricing or a result-based guarantee. These all work extremely well. Then we need to go into building a funnel for your agency. Having a good funnel for your agency is extremely important because it affects every single aspect of your business positively or negatively. If your funnel is bad, your outbound campaigns are not going to perform well, your sales calls are going to be hard, your prospects don't understand the value of your offer, and you are going to live a fucking miserable life. The most important part of the funnel is a VSL, which is a video sales letter. A VSL has infinite leverage. You create it once and you can use it to sell to million people if you have access to the traffic. First, you need to have an LP to embed the VSL to. You're going to redirect all your outbound domains, social media profiles, and sales assets to this landing page. For example, if you email a prospect X, they might get interested, but not enough to book a call. They go to your landing page and they see that the only thing they can do there is to watch a video sales letter or book a call. So they end up watching the VSL, they get sold on your offer and your mechanism, they understand the value of your offer, they book a call, and the call is going to be 10 times easier because they already understand the value of your offer. And that makes money. And that's why the landing page needs to be extremely simple. More variables means that it's going to be harder to crack. And we don't want to start optimizing this hyper complex funnel. We just don't have the bandwidth right now for it. The funnel just needs to provide the necessary information for the prospect in a simple way. And it needs to be simple so the prospect doesn't get overwhelmed immediately when they hop on the landing page. And here's a screenshot above showcasing one of the best performing landing pages I have seen from our clients. So as you can see, a really ugly one, but it works extremely well. Even though it's ugly, it is really simple and it only has three main components. It has, first of all, a headline, which is here, and it calls out the market. It states your offer or your protocol, which is pretty much just formatted. I help your first niche to offer end result in your offer time frame without the common pain in the niche using your mechanism. VSL is pretty much this video sales letter here, and it states the claim. It states status delta. It identifies market. It explains core concepts. It educates on activities needed, and it makes a call to action. And third thing it does, it has a button here, as you can see, an ugly purple button. And pretty much the button is just linked to a Calendly so the prospect can schedule a call after getting sold by your video sales setter. And Oliver from the landing page example above is right now making over 30k a month.
month, he has 1% booking rates. So if he sends 100 emails, he always gets one meeting, which is fairly easy to do. You can do like 500 meetings a day, 1000 meetings a day, and he has over 50% closing rates on demos. And his VSL is a big factor in that success. His prospects jump on a call with him and say, we watched the video on your website and it was amazing. We had to book a call with you because his landing page is so simple. His VSL does a lot of the heavy lifting to nurture the prospect before the call even happens. You have seen that if two agencies have an identical niche offer outreach method and sales process, the agency that has a better funnel, we have more calls booked in and a close at a higher rate since the prospects are already pre-sold on the idea of working with the agency who has a better funnel. And this situation is demonstrated here by this chart. So as you can see, they're both in the same market. They run the same outbound campaigns, but then the operator A who has a better VSL actually gets some calls booked through the VSL. Plus they have a higher closing rate. So even if they both send an email to 3000 leads, this agency ends up closing four clients and this agency ends up closing one client. So the difference is huge. You can literally 4X your results if you have a good VSL. As you can see, even if the agency A and agency B have the exact same niche, offer leads and cold email scripts, agency A quadruples the results from the same amount of work. This happens because when agency A sends cold emails to his prospects, the prospects check their landing page and watch their VSL. Because the prospects that normally wouldn't book a call with the agency watch through the VSL, they get nurtured towards the idea of working with agency A and they end up booking a call. So because agency A gets double the amount of these query calls booked, they close double the amount of clients or actually quadruple amount of clients here on this example because the closing rate also increases with a better VSL. In the situation of an agency B, they might have the other prospect interested in their offer based on their cold emails, but still want more information before committing on a call with them. The prospects go to agency B's landing page and can't get their questions answered or enough information presented in an engaging way and they don't end up booking a call with agency B. Now you are probably thinking, okay, Levi, what do I say on my VSL? A good VSL can take weeks to create if you go all in on it. Typically, when we write VSL scripts for our clients and us, we use a huge 15 page script template to build the VSL. If you want access to our VSL training, you can just go to agentvelocity.io and you'll get it from us. The main points you need to have in your scripts are 14 different things. So first, you need to have a niche specific headline and hook. This is important. Your prospects have has landed on a landing page. And if you don't catch their attention quickly, they leave the site and won't start watching the VSL. It needs to be targeted specifically for a niche and it needs to be bold and big enough that someone gets interested enough to start watching. The better you know your niche, the better headline you can write since it truly hits the pain points, desires, dreams, or fears that they have. And you can just follow the structure, how to go from state one to state two in this time frame using mechanism without the negative outcome. For example, for B2B SaaS founders, how to go from $100,000 MRR to $300,000 MRR in 41 weeks using process video outreach without having to hire any new SDR. Then down the line, if you find out that your niche's biggest pain point isn't hiring new SDRs and it's fact in relying on referrals for new sales, you would change it to for B2B SaaS founders, how to go from 100K MRR to 300K MRR in 41 weeks using process video outreach without having to rely on referrals. Then when you have done your headline, you need to have some social proof or case studies. Now you have made a bold claim in your headline, your prospect is probably thinking, this is bullshit. What does this guy know about anything? need to show some social proof and case studies so they know you are a credible source to learn from and listen to. Otherwise, they won't pay attention to your VSL and everything else will be useless. If you have case studies, that's great. So the transformation you've been able to provide using the structure, company X from state one to state two in time frame, as you're struggling with Z pain point, don't go super in depth on these, show them quickly to show you know what you're talking about. Also, if you don't have case studies, that's completely fine. Everyone starting out doesn't have case studies. And for example, the Oliver's VSL that performed really well, he didn't have any case studies at all when you're starting out. So for example, what you can do is you can use your own experience in the field from a career or studies. You can show off awards or achievements you've gotten in your niche, or you can just use public case studies from others. For example, you could find an article like this. This is just from leveling up blog, and they have a bunch of like public case studies that you can use. And you can just write, this is the extra strategy that Justin McGill, the founder of Leadfuse, used cold email to grow his company revenue to 30k a month in 12 months. This won't be as powerful, but it will get the job done in the beginning. Your main goal in this stage is to get your first case study and recreate the VSL using it. You can also say, this strategy is built on what I learned from working with companies like X, Y, and Z for the past seven years in my career as a software developer. So you show that you have some knowledge in the industry itself. Then when you have done that, you have identification. So you pretty much just cover who this is for. Before you introduce the concept of the sales setter, you need to call out the audience and identify with the prospect. This is an important step to showcase to the viewer that they are in the right place and that you understand their situation. So for example, you could say, if you're a B2B SaaS founder who has just raised a seed round and you're looking to break that $3 million ARR mark before the year ends, then stick around. This way also the lead quality will be better that you take calls with since the leads that aren't qualified for it will drop off. Then you have a background story, show off some credibility. Here you need to 
answer the question, who are you and why are you talking about this? Here again, we need to increase your credibility so the prospects actually listen to you and what you say and believes in what you're saying. You can use things like your track record, your achievements, your school, your awards, your career, pretty much anything that shows that you're actually an expert talking about this. Just do it quickly, get them to know you a bit better. Then you are going to be presenting the core concepts or pretty much answering the question, what is this? And here you're going to present your mechanism. So if you're selling cold email lead transfer services, you need to sell them the idea of why it works and how it works. If they don't buy into the mechanism you're using to deliver results, they will never buy your offer. Based on your niches, awareness and sophistication level, you educate them on why your mechanism is powerful and how it works and why it works. You don't need to give them the exact step-by-step -step instructions for doing it. You can give them a high-level overview of what it is and why it works. If your market is high on the awareness and sophistication scale, you need to come up with methods and strategies they haven't seen before and show them that this is the better way of getting results. Then we're just going to present them with an option one or option two. So to show them two alternatives, option one is doing it themselves or with another service provider. There's option two of paying you the do. You need to have a logical point of why they should choose your offer instead of just doing it in-house. For example, now you can start building your own cold email system in-house. However, you would need to spend thousands of dollars in tools, months into learning all the small analysis in the process and spend two to four hours every day managing the cold email campaigns. Or you can work with us and start getting results in the next two weeks from starting. Then when you have done that, you're just going to present them with some benefits. You need to sell yourself a bit more. You need to paint a picture in their heads of what happens if they work with you. Don't focus on features of your service. Talk about the end benefits that they desire. For example, when you work with us, you will be able to go from 100k MRR to 300k MRR in seven months. You will grow so fast. You'll be featured in 5,000s. You will have investors reaching out to you daily since you clearly have a product with demand and you will be able to focus on building a better team without having to focus on lead generation. Again, the better you understand your needs, the better you know what their actual desires and dreams are and you're able to target them with your mechanism. Remember, you are in a bridge between their painful state and the dreamland where they want to actually be. When you have presented the benefits, you're going to show them some features. So you're going to answer the question, how does this actually work? Your features need to make sense based on what you explained in the core concept of the parts of your VSL. You need to show off that your features make it easier, faster or cheaper to use the mechanism that you have presented. Give a monetary value to all of your features and stack the value of your offer. Then you're going to do a call to action. You have shown them everything you need to show them to get them sold on your mechanism and prove that the best option for getting results with the mechanism is by working with you. You need to answer the question, how do I actually get this? So if you're interested in seeing how we can use the system for a company, click the button below and book a 30 minute discovery session for us. After that, you just do some urgency and scarcity because now they need a reason to act right now instead of putting it to the side and coming back to it later. For example, if you can only work with certain number of clients at once, or if you plan to increase the price in the future, let them know about it. Make sure that it's real. Fake urgency and scarcity will always come back and do more damage than good. Never lie to your prospects or your clients or your team member. If your offering has a bonus, bring it up now. Some extra things that they get if they book a call with you right now. This gives more urgency and pushes them to take advantage of the opportunity right now. Then a basic guarantee. At this point, your prospects might be thinking, what if I hop on a call, get sold something and I won't get results? You want to take away the risk by presenting your guarantee and making it a no brainer option to hop on a call. After that, you just do a simple summary. So you have now given them a lot of information about your offer and service to summarize everything into a clean list and remind them about everything they will get if they work with you. So after the summary, make a new call to action to push them into booking the call. Now you might be thinking, this is what I hear a lot is Levy, how long should my VSL be? The length of the VSL doesn't matter as long as the content is interesting. If you're teaching someone valuable information they've never heard before and they truly believe it changes their business, they will listen. People literally spend like three and a half hours watching Avatar because it's interesting and it's valuable or it's unique or something is happening in their brain. So you shouldn't be worried about the length of your VSL, just worry about the content of the VSL. Also, you might be asking, how do I record my VSL? No need to do anything fancy here. Just get a solid microphone. Here I just have linked HyperX Quadcast microphone. This is a really good one. I used this for a long time. And now I have the Shure SM7B microphone, which is also great, but it's a bit more on the expensive side. You don't need to do anything crazy here. Get a haircut and have a nice shirt. Read through the VSL out loud five times before recording it. And if the flow isn't natural, go back and edit the sales letter. Get loom.com and record yourself presenting through the document. Speak clearly smile, have energy, and don't stress about the small things like messing up a word, etc. Go out there, edit out the ooms and ums, but otherwise just leave it raw. I like to use ScreenFlow for recording on Mac, but you can use Camtasia or whatever floats your boat. When finished, upload it to your landing page using Vimeo or embed the loom directly. Don't spend too much creating a crazy movie production level VSL. You'll be going back to it and changing and tweaking it a lot. So the production of the VSL needs to be simple. Otherwise you can't do it. You can either make a Google document of it and record yourself presenting through it with 
with Loom or just make a simple slideshow with Google Slides and do the same. You also might be thinking, do I need to show my face? To be honest, it isn't completely necessary, but there isn't a reason why you wouldn't do it. Of course, you might be shy in the beginning and don't feel comfortable on camera, but right now is the perfect time to get over that fear. Having your face on the VSL makes it easier for the prospect to connect with you and they'll already feel familiar with you when they hop on a call because they've already seen your face. You also might be thinking, what language should my VSL be in? And it should be in the language your prospect speaks. If your niche is the French IT company founders, film and write it in French. And you also might be thinking, what software do I use to create my landing page? Just use card.co. It's 19 bucks a year and it's really simple to learn and use. You can also use ClickFunnels if you want to ball out, but there literally isn't no point in doing it in the beginning because the funnel is just going to be super simple anyway. So now we have built the foundations for our lead transition agency and we are ready to go and start getting our first few clients, actually doing some client acquisition, starting to acquire them. If you have done the first three steps correctly, which is niche, offer and funnel, this is going to be the easy part. To get clients, there are only two things we need to focus on, generating calls and closing those calls. There are multiple ways to book sales calls for an agency, but in my experience, the best method to use is cold email outreach. When we have mastered the skill of cold email, you are able to fill your own calendar with high quality sales calls predictably, and we can also do the same for our clients. Create cold email process has four different pieces. It has a prospecting list, it has a sending technology, it has sequences, and it also has inbox management. For building a prospect list, use tools like Apollo, Lead Hype, or Crunchbase, or Store Leads. Pretty much all the tools are extremely easy to use and are fairly budget friendly as well. Here's just an example of Apollo.io. You just input your niche into the tool and export the list of prospects with their email addresses, company information, name, and everything necessary. After you have exported your list, you just verify it with a tool like Million Verifier to ensure the emails are still valid. Otherwise, you'll suffer from deliverability issues down the line. And after you get your list of prospects, we need some email accounts that we can send the emails from. We want to be sending emails from multiple different domains and addresses to make sure Google doesn't flag our sending account as spam. And if that happens, we'll have to get new sending domains to send from. So first, you go to Google Domains or Google Workspace and get 10 new domains and add one extra user for each domain. This way, you have 20 email accounts you can sell and hold emails from. You can pretty much just use this guide to actually do it, set up everything, boom, boom, boom. It has all the steps mapped out and exact SOP. You can just find this from my channel. Then you upload your domains into an email sending tool like instantly.ai, warm the domains up and import your lead list to the sending tool. Now we pretty much are halfway through to launching our first cold email campaigns. Next thing we need to do is our cold email sequence that we are going to send to the prospects. You first need an intro email and the intro email is just the first email your prospect receives. While crafting your outbound emails, we need to understand one simple principle. The point of cold email isn't to sell a service. The point is to spark enough of interest that the prospect agrees to book a call with you. And then in that call, you can sell your solution. And you want to use this structure for intro emails. This works extremely well. This is what we use. Subject line is just going to be a quick question. You're going to do high first name and then a relevancy or location based personalization. You're going to plug in your offer or your case study and do a soft call to action signature. And then in the PS line of the email, you add a guarantee, a case study or extra resource, pretty much anything that might make it more interesting for the prospect. And here's an example. Hey, John, congratulations on the seed round. So this is a relevancy based personalized line. And then you can just say wanted to reach out to since we help US based seed stage tech startups like yours, find the right market to focus on and scale from 2 million ARR to 3.5 million ARR using personalized code outreach at scale. Do you mind if I send more information on this? Cheers, Evierla, your company name. And then in the PS line, you can just plug a case study. We recently helped company X go from X to Y in this time frame. And then when they reply, you pretty much just book them into a meeting. And for the follow up sequence, you can just use the structure. So after two days, you send them a quick reminder. Hi, did you get this? After five days, you send them more info on your offer or a case study. So pretty much just get them more info. After seven days, ask for inside referral. So is there anyone else that I should be reaching out about this inside your company? And then seven days later, you send a breakup email pretty much saying, okay, I see that you're not interested. You're busy. If you ever want to talk about this, hit me up, blah, 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 blah. And the key to a well resonating email sequence is constant A-B testing. You should not expect to get traction the first time you launch a campaign. It is an iterative process. You test three to five different angles, you contact 500 leads with each, and you analyze the data and see what angles resonate the most. You take the best performing angle in terms of the booking rate and spin up a new variation to find something that hits the nerve better. And right now, you probably are asking, okay, Levy, that makes sense, but how do I come up with different angles? So you just take a sheet of paper or an empty Google Doc, and you list down all the benefits of using our service, all problems your service solves, and all results you provide for a similar company. And you use those as your angles. Your goal is to find the most painful problem or the most desired end benefit that your service provides and write with that. If you're not able to find anything that resonates, in most cases, your foundations, so your niche offer and funnel are wrong and you're just trying to sell something that nobody wants to buy or your messaging is wrong and they don't understand that they actually
actually want it. Now with the prospect list, sending accounts and sequences, we are able to launch the campaigns. But of course, just launching won't book any sales calls. Prospects are going to have questions, they want more information, they'll have time preferences and multiple things that won't let them book a call immediately after they have received your first email from you. That's why we need to have a solid inbox management strategy in place. And inbox management in a nutshell means that we are getting positive responses to our cold emails. We are pushing those people to book a call with you by handling their objections and providing more information over email. It's extremely important that you respond to these positive replies correctly. Otherwise, you are going to lose prospects. And you can just use this inbox management guide that we have created once again. It shows you like, okay, if the prospect replies that they are interested now, it shows you exactly how to reply to them, etc. So you can just follow this and you will have a really, really good inbox management strategy. You also might be thinking, okay, what are good metrics to aim in for cold email campaigns? Again, this depends a lot on the niche, but a good rule of thumb is that you want to get 60% open rates. And if you cannot get a 60% open rates on your cold emails, you probably have a deliverability issue, your lead lists are poor quality or your subject line is bad. So if you're not getting 5% replies, your offer probably isn't exciting or you're targeting the wrong title in your niche or your CTA also might be too hard. And then we also want to aim for 0.5% booking rate. So we want to be booking a call every 200 emails that we send. And if you're not hitting that, your offer in most cases isn't interesting enough that they'd hop on a call with you. This in most cases means that your market sophistication and awareness levels are higher than your messaging. Also, you might have inefficiencies in your inbox management process and you're not following up with the prospects enough. Also, what software is to use for getting leads and sending emails. For sending emails, use instant.ai. For building lead lists, we use Apollo or Scrape LinkedIn Sales Navigator directly. Find out where your niche hangs out and scrape that. There's an unlimited amount of strategies, but in most cases, one or two of them work the best for your niche. You also might be thinking if you're from EU, what about GDPR? And we have spent a lot of money and time talking with lawyers and researching laws on these topics. So just do a quick Google search on cold email GDPR laws if needed. It is extremely easy to follow these guidelines and not break any GDPR laws while sending cold emails. We have literally sent over 2 million emails in EU and never had any issues. The number is probably closer to like 10 million, but this is like what we have tracked ourselves. Also, how many times should I follow up? Depends on at which stage the prospect is on. If they are never replied to your cold email campaign or shown interest, just four to six times is perfect, spread over three months. And if they have shown interest in your offer previously, follow up with them until they give you a clear yes or no answer to hop in on a call. Then we go into closing booked calls into happy paying customers. So right now we are booking calls in the calendar and we actually need to turn them into paying customers. So we need to convert those calls into clients. Because as an agency owner, time is your most valuable asset. We need to use it efficiently. That's why our sales process has two main goals. First, qualify. Second, close. Your sales process is split into two calls. And the first call is going to be called a discovery call. It's the first call you have with the prospect. And the whole point of this call is to set an agenda and expectations for the rest of the sales process and determine if the prospect is a fit for you to work with. Remember, you don't need 20 clients to make 20k a month. You just need a few high quality ones. So qualifying is going to be really important. Ask the prospect questions to find out what they actually struggle with, where they want to be and what they do and can you even help them in the first place and you can ask questions like these to do so why did they actually even agree on the call what are they trying to do what is their goal are they not there yet what have they tried to do to fix it how did it work how long did they try to do it what else have they tried what do they sell who they sell it to what are their metrics what kind of case studies they have what kind of guarantees etc then if you feel that the prospect is a fit you give them a mini pitch to spark their interest and you schedule them in for the next 30 minute call which is called a demo call this demo call should be scheduled max three days in the future if possible and you explain to the prospects that you will plan out an offer for them and you'll go over that in the next call. Also explain the demo call is decision making call and it's going to end in a yes or no answer and make sure all the necessary decision makers are attending the demo call. This will make sure that you don't get stuck in a follow up loop with indecisive prospects who are too nice to tell you no. And then we have our demo call. So in this call, our goal is to close the prospect. We have already gone through a discovery call with them. We know exactly what they are looking for and what they actually need. We also know that our offer would be valuable for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the demo call. In the beginning of the call, we want to make sure that our expectations are still clear for the prospect, this is going to be a yes or no call. Also make sure that all the decision makers are present in the call. If they are not and a decision can't be made, reschedule the call for a later date. You don't want to pitch them and go through a demo if they can't decide on it. If all decision makers are present, spend three minutes going over discovery notes to remind them why they were interested in the first place to hop on the demo call. So then you go over things they told you in the first call, like pains, dreams, desires, what they have tried, what their metrics are, etc. This way you are both on the same page before moving forward and you don't end up pitching the solution that actually doesn't exist. After that, you give a simple pitch. If you are not experienced in sales, don't use a sales deck. Just focus on high level overview, clarity, time frame, and expectations. Don't go too in detail on technical aspects of service delivery. This will just confuse the prospect. And you just explain your offer and why it's the most logical approach to increase their revenue. Focus on high quality of leads, predictability, and expected ROI from the partnership. An example pitch structure can be what you do, case studies if you have any, what your protocol is, how it works, what is the results of it, time frame, expectations, end results, and future pacing, pricing, guarantee, and close. You can also use our Figma close to make sure your prospects understand the full value of our offer.
offer. I have like a 20 minute loom filmed on the Figma clothes that our customers use and it's extremely, extremely powerful. So you can just use that. After the first close, in most cases, you'll get some objections. This is completely normal and it is actually part of the sales process. So don't get scared if they tell you no. They can be about pricing, timing, uncertainty, or whatever the prospect has in mind and overcome these objections and always go straight for the close immediately after. Repeat this process until the prospect buys or leaves the call. And we have also created this objection handling sheet that you can get access to. This pretty much just has all the objections, how to reply to all objections that you can get during the sales process. And it also works extremely well for closing. After the prospect agrees to buy, transition smoothly into your onboarding process, schedule onboarding call and get contracts signed, etc. At this point, the art of sales turns into a numbers game. You look at your machine's inputs and outputs, you make iterations based on data and scale up once it's profitable. A lot of people always at this point, they ask, yo Levi, what if I don't have any sales experience? And this is completely normal state to be in when building your agents. The good news is that you don't need any. If you have built your foundations right and your VSL is written right, sales are the easy part of the process. Also, the best way to learn sales is by actually doing sales, hop on calls with prospects and do one-on-one -on -one role play calls with your friends or family members if needed. You learn this by doing. You also might be asking, what if my English is bad? This is also a really common question that I get and the truth is that it doesn't matter. You can use this as an excuse for a poor results, but it won't really take you far. I'm from Finland and we are famous for speaking ridiculously bad English, also known as rally English because that's how all of the rally drivers in Finland speak it. And the most common spoken language in the world is bad English. You have to jump on calls and you'll learn better. Also by doing practice calls alone or one-on-one -on -one role play with someone, you'll be able to get more comfortable with speaking English. And most people don't really even care about it. I know right now my English might be like okay level, but when I started out, it was terrible and I really, really struggled with it. But we were still closing deals, speaking English and in the English market. So it is literally all in your head. You also might be saying, yo, I get anxious and nervous when I think about taking sales calls. It's a completely normal situation. Call reluctancy is a byproduct of having an unclear sales process, but now you actually have a clear sales process. Build your overall framework based on what I just walk you through and create your scripts. You'll have a lot more confidence then. Also realize that if you are ready to do things that the majority of people are not willing to do, you will reap rewards that most people will never get. Use this as motivation. And then we go into activity step number two, which is getting a case study. Now we have our first three to five clients and we could almost consider ourselves as a real business. The chances are that everything under this point was fairly easy. You probably made your first five to 10K from starting fees and you feel like an absolute terminator. But actually you're just getting started. At this stage of building a Legion agency, your main goal is to get a case study. Getting a case study as early in your journey as possible is extremely important. It gives you leverage to start approaching higher end clients or charging higher prices. It also forces you to dial in your fulfillment process immediately so you don't end up scaling and burning the business. Below are two examples of my first few case studies. My first case study was a Nordic focused multi-service marketing agency and we leveraged cold email and LinkedIn outbound to generate an extra 100,000 euros in a few months. And here's a screenshot of that. And my second case study was an e-commerce development marketing agency. And in the first month we worked together, I booked 53 qualified discovery calls through cold email with e-commerce stores making over 300,000 euros a year. And here's a screenshot about showcasing a slide from our sales deck, showcasing client results. 17 qualified meetings in six days and 53 qualified meetings in a month. A big mistake a lot of people make when building their agency is not understanding the importance of getting the case studies. If you don't have a case study proving your competence, you will forever stay stuck playing for scraps in the small leagues, charging one to three thousand dollars a month prices from small companies. And then vertical scaling will never really work. Without case studies, your campaigns won't work as well. Your VSL won't convert at its highest potential. You'll struggle to close for high prices and you get lapped by beginners in your market with worse offers. And I know that in the beginning, the game just might seem impossible since you don't have a case study, but it's just part of starting out. That's why we close for lower prices and take more calls in the beginning. In order to get a case study first, we need to deliver stellar results to our newly acquired client. And most people complicate this process so much, which slows down the process of delivering the results. So it's extremely important that you follow this process. So we actually go into getting results for clients. Delivering good results for our clients all starts from the onboarding call. Immediately after you close, you schedule a 60 minute call with them. And in this call, you just go through in depth everything you can about their company, product and customers. If your onboarding process is unclear and doesn't set you up for success, you end up having to freestyle your service delivery. I'm sure that you have been there, you sign a client, you're ecstatic, but now you actually have to do some work and you're panicking because you watch a course or some YouTube videos and you're freestyling the entire process. And you're thinking like, okay, what do they even offer? Writing these emails is so hard. What lead should I even scrape? And this is a surefire way to ensure you deliver subpar results and stay in the flywheel of always having to acquire new clients. It's a coin flip every time when you sign a client, you're not 100% sure how you'll get them results. And as a result of doing this, your clients will have an unclear and bad onboarding process. They'll get buyer's remorse and you won't have good enough foundation from the onboarding to actually get them results. Clients end up asking for refunds and are just a pain in the ass to work with. You can't give out good guarantees since you're not sure if you're able to deliver good results. You have the wrong experience 
expectations about working with you and get disappointed and sure no matter what results you get. Because they get bad results, they are mad, they want their money back and you're ashamed to jump on weekly calls with them and you feel like a scammer. You have the negative word of mouth working against you, doors that were otherwise open will shut down over time and you're losing a huge amount of revenue since you're not getting paid on your performance fee. It's the most critical part of the business because the amount of money you make is directly correlated to the amount of social proof you have and how much money you make for others. That is why we need to have an extremely clear and well-structured onboarding process, structured as efficiently as possible. You know exactly what you're going to do every single day and during every single step in the onboarding process. With cold email lead generation, the process is super simple. When we audit our client campaigns that are not working, the problems are always the same. You have a troubleshooting SOP to ensure if anything goes wrong, you know how to fix the situation, you have a clear system for delivering results that you have dialed in through repetition and data, and everything just works. And here's just a quick, really high-level overview example of how this works. Because you have actually dialed this in well, your clients have better onboarding process, so they won't regret starting to work with you. They won't ask for refunds down the line since you showed that you are professional and treat them well. They have all the clarity in the world and feel confident about working with you. Your clients will be a lot more tolerant even if there are roadblocks throughout the process. And then even if you deliver subpar results, your clients will go longer with you and give you more chance to do a better job simply because you took the time to give them a good onboarding experience. You get great and predictable results for your clients that you're proud of. You build good case studies that you can leverage in your outreach via sell and sales calls. Word of mouth works for you instead of against you. The referral machine starts building momentum and start getting clients without doing any extra work. You make more money per client since they pay you more and stay for a longer time. You can confidently give out amazing no-brainer guarantees since you know you can fulfill them. By leveraging high-level case studies, every single remaining part of the business becomes more effortless. This could be the only thing that you did well and better than everything else and itself it would drive the business to a higher level than anything else. This is everything. If you execute it correctly, you'll make all the money that you want. And on the onboarding call, you just pretty much ask questions like what separates you from the competition? Who buys your product and services? Why do they buy it? What is their title? How big is their company? Where are they located in? What end results do they get after working with you? Can it be measured? Does it have any second effects? How long does it take? What are examples of results you have provided for your customers? Pretty much you go as in-depth as you can on the call to ensure there is no confusion or misunderstanding on anything. After we have gathered all the information we need, we're going to start setting up the campaign structure. And this includes the exact same thing you did for yourself before launching your own campaigns. To buy domains, warm them up on instantly, scrape a list of prospects using Apollo, you write down different angles and follow-ups for the campaigns, you manage the inboxes after launching the campaigns. Pretty much the only difference between your own cold email campaigns and your clients' campaigns is the fact that you don't have the full control over niche and the offer. Because of the friction, you'll have to do more testing and market research, and a huge mistake a lot of people make when delivering beach and agent service is focusing 100% of their energy into specific scripts they are using for clients. In most cases, if the client campaign isn't performing well, it is an issue of the niche and offer alignment. The actual script doesn't matter nearly as much as the niche you are targeting on how you are positioning your clients. Use the exact same strategy you use for yourself when testing for variations. Write down the problems the offer solves, benefits it has, and the results your client has generated for other companies. For each variation you are testing, reach out to at least 500 prospects to validate the data. Our goal here is to find targeting and messaging combination that books calls at 0.3 to 0.5 billion booking rates at scale. Immediately, when you have a variation that books calls at this rate, you use that variation to reach out to all potential prospects in the market. When you hit the 0.5% booking rate on your cold email message, you're booking your client 15 to 40 sales calls a month. From those 15 to 40 sales calls a month, the client should be closing at least three to five new clients every month, resulting in a significant increase in their monthly revenue. And here below is an example of Arman's landing page. He worked with a marketing agency based in the UK and helped them add extra $280,000 to their pipeline and close over $120,000 in new revenue in 62 days. This is pretty much what it looked like. That worked extremely well for him. Now that you're dealing with results to your clients and everyone is happy, we need to get the case study. The primary purpose of case studies is to increase the perceived probability of success when working with you. Meaning, if your prospect was comparing you and your competition with the same offer, same target market and same pricing, they will pick the one they believe is more likely to achieve the outcome they are actually looking for. If you neglect this step, you're going to leave copious amounts of cold hard cash on the table. So then, how to actually collect the case study? While collecting case studies, make sure you collect a genuine high converting case study with a proven framework. The case study will have to be genuine with an interview style video that cannot be faked. During the interview, you need to ensure you cover every claim and offer you make in your own offer. You also need to make sure you include important conversion focused elements such as pains, dream outcomes and timeframes and so on. How are you going to ask your customers for an interview? After you have delivered your customers killer results, you need to ask for the case study. Do this as soon as possible. Don't try to quote unquote save on the case study. You can always ask them to redo it if you deliver better results down the line. They will 
will happily do so. And you can just use this email template to ask your customers for a case study interview. So really basic, hi John, since our partnership has been going extremely well, I wanted to ask if you'd be open for a quick 20 to 30 minute interview with me via Zoom. If you'd like to gain insights into problems you are helping our customers overcome and get a better understanding of your situation after working with us. Also, we'd like to collect feedback to use in our marketing and improve our service. And then as optional point, you can just say, of course, we understand that you're busy. So we'd like to offer you a hundred dollar conversation for your time. Depends on how busy your client actually is and how big they are. And then you can just ask, would you be open to this? And then you will add a PS section. We will, of course, let you review everything before publishing anything about your particular case. You can send that message via email or Slack and follow up a few times if you don't get an answer in a few days. You don't want to be extremely pushy about it, but don't give up easily. One good case study can change the whole trajectory of your business and can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions. I have literally seen it happen so many times. Then comes the case study interview. Here, you want to keep this as raw and casual as possible. People don't want to see Netflix production level scripted case studies. They want to see real people talking about real results. So run a Zoom or a Google Meet call and record it. The key to running a good interview is asking the right questions that digs out the juicy information that proves the impact of your service. Things that you want to hear from your customers' mouth during the interview are what was their starting stage situation? What situation are they in right now? How long did it take to get the results? What problems did your offer fix? What would have happened if they never started working with you? Where they heard about you and why they took action? And what should your prospects know about working with you? And you can just use these questions to get those answers. So you can just ask, tell me a little bit about yourself. What were you doing before working with us? What problems are you trying to solve? What were you trying and how did it work? What results did you achieve? How did it affect your life and business? What do you think the impact of working with us has been? When did you first hear about us? What got your interest? Why did you decide to do business with us? Describe working with us. How did you get the most value? Why do you think that is? And how likely are you recommend us? And these pretty much questions have been engineered to get all the juicy information that you want to get during the call with your prospect. Then for editing, formatting, and distributing, now we have a raw video recording from the call. Don't over edit it. Keep it natural. Edit out the basic ooms and arms and basic fuck ups to make it flow smoother, but that's it. Then collect screenshots, charts, statements, etc., providing that the case study actually is valid and there is a clear correlation between the results achieved and also your offer. We create a Google Doc showcasing all the elements of the case study to link the interview, you get their state one, you get their state two, you get their time frames, how long did this transformation actually get. You get a quote from the client, you can just take it from the interview, you can explain the process that you use, and media providing correlation between results and you. So screenshots of the campaign, screenshots of Slack messages, screenshots of their CRM, etc. Just to show that actually it happened because they were working with you. Now you will have that Google Doc stored in case you ever need any material to prove your competence. You should use your case study everywhere. There is no harm in blasting it to every possible channel you have access to. So create a new VSL with the case study, upload it to YouTube, put it on a landing page, create LinkedIn Twitter content about it, have a link to the case study on your LinkedIn profile, send it to your prospects, put it in your sales deck, just get eyeballs on the case study and those eyeballs will turn into revenue. Now the goal is to keep delivering killer results, stack up as many case studies as you possibly can and distribute them through different platforms for your prospects to see. The more proof you have, the higher prices you can demand and the higher your closing rate will be. Do not neglect this. This also lets us niche down using the case study, which is extremely, extremely important because like I mentioned, the first niche and your offer you create are just the starting point. When you get your first case study, you use that case study to niche down, recreate your offer and a video sales setter. For example, if you're previously targeted the whole information and technology service industry in the US and you nail a case study with an IT company that specialized in cybersecurity, start targeting similar cybersecurity companies that you got the case study with. Also go back to your VSL and rewrite the whole thing using the case study you have gotten. You increase your credibility by breaking down on the VSL and backtrack the exact process you went through to get those results and sell that process as your offer. This way, it's way easier for a prospect to buy in their offer since it's already proven the work in the exact same sub niche, which lets you start approaching bigger companies, charge higher prices and close your calls easier. Sometimes I get a question, okay, what if my client doesn't agree on doing an interview? You can ask if you can write the case study explanation yourself and just run it by them to make sure all the information is accurate. If for some reason they don't want their company name or results used in the case study, you just create an anonymous case study, but make sure you go into extreme detail on the process and situation to prove it's still a credible and actual real case study. Also, you might be asking and thinking, what are good enough results to make a case study about? And a lot of people downplay the results they're getting and think they are not big enough to make a case study about. The results you have gotten don't have to be anything super crazy for it to be useful as a case study. The whole purpose of your case study is to provide proof that you're actually able to deliver on your promise. So booking 10 to 20 calls in 30 day time frame is more than enough. Sometimes the numbers can even be lower. You just need to show that it works. Then we go into activity number three, which starts solving other problems in the market to scale vertically. Now you have gotten your first case study and proof you can deliver results through outbound in your industry. And a big mistake that many business owners make is that they never evolve their offers or leverage their competence in their niche. So they're stuck charging low prices and never scaling. And if we do this correctly, we are able to two to four 
XR prices and scale to 10 to 50k a month through just a few clients. Now your goal is to keep working with the same industry while identifying other bottlenecks that could result in increased revenue events. So a good example of this is things like low closing rate on calls, low sharp rate on sales calls, low conversion rate on landing page or high effort follow-up process. Immediately when you identify a problem like this in your client's business, you start coming up with different solutions and testing them. For example, if you see that only 60% of meetings you book for a client end up happening, you can create a pre-call automation through calendar technology, to remind the prospect about the call. So you can just pretty much use Calendly and set up like a reminder system that reminds them, hey, this call is actually happening, you should probably hop on. As you solve this bottleneck, you should also look into opening up other acquisition channels for your clients. If your messaging works well on cold email, you should use the same messaging angles on LinkedIn and potentially Twitter as well, depending on your needs. Also, you can start running them paid advertising through meta platform to increase lead flow. And below is an example of results you can generate. If you're booking discovery calls for 66 euros a piece and you're charging them 300 euros for a discovery call, that's a pretty good margin. And this is pretty much just an example campaign that I have done. As you can see, we have booked eight discovery calls for six euros each, which is absolutely money. At this stage, since you're doing more revenue generating activities for your clients, you want to charge them three to $5,000 a month retainers plus five to 15% revenue share. This way you can focus on only a few clients to scale and deliver better results. You keep testing different solutions and processes and immediately when you see something working, you duplicate the same process across all your clients. It's extremely powerful since when you find the process that generates results for one of your clients, you can duplicate it to two to four other clients and get outside returns on your work. As you are finding the best practice to generate results, you tweak your video sales setter offer and messaging. As long as you stay in the pocket, the more you learn and the more you learn, the better results you get. And the better results you get, the more money you make. So we want to really stay in the pocket, actually just get really, really good in our niche. But Levi, what if I don't know how to deliver any other services. This is completely fine and actually expected. You will definitely need a bit of trust from your client side for the first few times when you deliver something new. But if you have cracked the hardest piece of the puzzle for them, which is the offer plus market fit and leveraged it to run profitable cold email campaigns, you already have 75% of the work done. For example, if you want to run paid advertising campaigns on Facebook for your clients, you will just watch a few tutorials on Facebook ads to understand the business manager interface and then target the exact same market you did with cold email and present the exact same offer with a bit of copywriting magic added into it. If it resonates on cold email, it will also resonate on Facebook ads. And if you have already proven to your client that you are a G and can get results, they will likely trust you with other aspects of their business. You can also just upsell them through other people's services. So you can just get a freelancer who does the media buying or whatever it might be and pay them 1K a month and upsell the service to your client for 2K a month. And there's pretty much service arbitrage, but this isn't as good for vertical scaling, but once again, an easy way to make more money when you have the first few clients. Then we go to the last activity, activity number four, which is scaling your agency through hiring and automation. Now you have a proven process and you're making 20 to 50K a month and you're getting better in your market daily and you're running experiments based on theses you come up with. As you're scaling, you need to start optimizing your time usage to ensure the highest return on your time. If you don't do this, you will end up spending hours every day on tasks that don't generate any money and working 12 hour days from Monday to Sunday. Even though it can be necessary at some stage in the journey, it is not sustainable. We want to stay in the game for years to compound our experience and knowledge to benefit as much as possible from our protocol. You want to keep your back office as lean as you can and there are really only three main aspects to scaling which are hiring automating and tweaking your offer so first for hiring hiring is an absolute key to building sustainable operations as the main operator you don't want to spend your time on low leverage tasks it is 100 times better for you to be writing sales assets testing outbound or structuring new offers for the market as you scale higher you want to start leverage your operations as much as you can with ai and technology which pretty much has an infinite leverage hiring virtual assistants and giving them pre-made prompts tech stacks and processes will get you a lean team of fucking killers without having to spend $5,000 a month per employee. So you can get an employee who is a bit more inexperienced, maybe pay them one, two K a month and then give them the right technology, right AI prompts, etc., And you can get them to be five, six, seven K a month employee on their skill level. And you can just use this. This is a protocol that I have written some time ago. I've written it on 19th of February, 2023. Pretty much this just shows you exactly how to train people, how to actually hire them, how to create SOPs, how to build these funnels, etc. You can once again, get this for free. This will show you exactly how we do it and it works extremely, extremely well. That is the exact process how we build our teams now. Then for automating, to ensure you only build the necessary automations, you're going to do a week long time audit every 90 days. This time audit will reveal your time usage each day and below is an example of a time audit. So pretty much every single day for a week, you just track what tasks are you doing, how much time you spent on it and how much money that actually generates you in the long run. For one week, keep a time journal during every minute that you work and you fill out the following. What task, how much time and is it a high leverage task? Meaning does it lead to direct ROI on the time used. As you can see on this example, we spent around seven hours on work, but only around one third of the task was high
thyroid activities. From these activities, what could be the potential solution to open up more time for you? For example, once we prepare for a client that you are spending 38 minutes on, you're gonna have AI write it and automatically send it to the shared Slack channel with your client. Scraping leads, you can just hire a lead scraper. Writing content, you just use AI to write it and edit it yourself. Collecting invoices from Gmail, you can just create a no-code automation, collect them or use a tool. Writing a new VSL, you don't wanna automate this because it's so high leverage. And team calls, once again, you don't really wanna automate your team calls. When you go through the time audit every 90 days, you will be able to remove all the no to low ROI tasks and over time that will compound into the most profitable usage of your time. Our goal is to only work for a few hours a day, but have those few hours generate us thousand to three thousand dollars on average. And once again, it might seem like a far-fetched idea, but it's actually not really hard to do. And then the last thing is tweaking the offer. And this is extremely important. Like we keep our team lean, we also want to keep our client roster lean. It's way better for you to have five high quality clients paying you 5k a month each than 12 painful clients paying you 2k a month each. In order for you to scale based on client quality, you need to keep building and optimizing your protocol as often as possible. And for this, we need to run some feedback loops. Our goal is to complete our protocol, analyze results from that one repetition and find the highest leverage insights based on it. Then using those insights, we want to tweak our protocol to make it better or more profitable as long as it doesn't decrease our customer success, of course. And a real world example of this would be that a customer X hires a legion agency to help them scale their company. And this legion agency onboards customer X and after building foundational assets and resources, the legion agency starts building a list of prospects. The legion agency needs to scrape a custom list because of customer X's specific client profile. Due to this fact, it takes the agency two weeks to build the prospect list. Based on this, the agency sees a clear problem in the process. Time delay with the custom list building is causing a loss of potential revenue because it takes longer time to actually launch the campaign. The agency hires a software developer to write a custom code for the agency that completes the list building process faster, more efficiently, and for cheaper. So they automate it. Now, if a similar situation occurs in the future and the process can be put into action faster. Due to your consistently upgrading your process, you're generating better results and getting better case studies. And because of this, you're able to start selling the big Fortune 5000 brands and charge two, three, four, or even five times higher prices. This way, you can just work with select few high quality customers, focus on delivering crazy results for them and making a lot of money. As you can see from what we just went through, all you really need to do is first get your first three to five clients in a broad B2B market. Then you get a case study from these clients. Then you start solving other problems in the market to scale it vertically. And as you are doing that, you scale your agency through hiring and automation. And this way you are able to replicate wide success. This is the exact same roadmap that he followed and build a $76,000 a month net profit agency in nine months without past experience or case studies. Now there are a few ways to replicate this. So you either can do the option one, which is pretty much that you keep doing what you have done up until now, buying low price courses, getting general advice and spinning your wheels, hoping something changes. But how much wheel power do you think you can master and how much longer can you go without seeing any results? Also by doing this, the opportunity cost is enormous since you could spend the months you spend on learning on actually making money. Or you can go with the option two, which is pretty much working directly with me and my team at agentsvelocity.io. Follow the exact step-by-step -step instructions we are going to give you. Sign your first client in 30 days, get your first case study in 60 days and hit 10k a month in 90 days. And once again, just with a quick reminder, this is for aspiring Legion agency owners who want to take control of their life, build a reliable lead transition agency and make at least 120k net profit in the next 12 months by providing actual value to the market. This is for people who already are running a social media marketing agency, a Legion agency or any service-based digital business or struggling to scale past 10k a month while charging high prices and providing fuck you results to their clients. And also this is perfect for working professionals who have experience in marketing, sales or software from their career and are looking to escape their nine to five and build a lifestyle full of freedom through the digital world. This stuff works. And in the past months, we have been able to take these frameworks and help people like Oliver Scarnild from Copenhagen, Denmark. Before Oliver started working with me, he was running an SMMA agency. He had been doing that for 24 months and he was still making zero dollars a month. We started working together on September 23rd, 2022. In 35 days, he made $17,000 from his new Legion agency offer. And then in 18 weeks, he went and scaled it up to $35,000 a month while adapting his protocol to the market. You can watch the testimonial. And here's just some screenshots. 8.5K this week, 5.3K in a day, 3.5K collect today and a 30K a month hit. Or Christian and Huey from California and New Zealand. And before they started working with me, they were at zero dollars a month without any idea what kind of an agency they should build. And after 91 days working with us, they were doing 25K a month in revenue. And once again, you can check their interview from YouTube. Here's just some screenshots. They just closed a 10K deal plus rev share, closed a 5K deal plus $350 per call, just upsell the client from 4.7K plan to 10K plan. And they closed their sixth client for 5K plus 350 per call plus 25% rev share. So absolute killer deals for these guys and really good vertical scale. Also, we helped Michael Choi from Taipa, China. And before Michael started working with us, he didn't have any idea what kind of a business he should start.
his best idea was to start a TikTok UGC agency, but quickly realized that there is too much to learn. It's just gonna get super hectic. So after working with us for 16 weeks, Michael was making over 20K a month, plus crazy performance fees on that. So probably like 30K a month, actually. You can watch the interview and here are some screenshots. Added 40K in a month for a client. Client closed a 50K deal, cold hard cash. Got a client from zero to 200K in cash collected in six weeks and just closing from really, really, really nice deals from that. Imagine you have 20% commission on deal closed and your client closes 150K deal. That's pretty, pretty, pretty good money. That's like 30K from one deal closed. Also, you have helped people like Tony Young from Texas, from the United States. Before Tony started working with us, she didn't know how to package her offer, who to target and how to get more clients. She had a lot of digital marketing skills and experience, but no clear roadmap to leverage her skills. And six months after working with us, she was making over $40,000 a month plus performance fees while working with actually four clients. This has to be updated. And here's once again, we already went through these screenshots, but closing over 100K deals left and right. We also have Daniel Sanagord from Uppsala, Sweden. And before working with us, Daniel was working as a nine to five sales rep. He wanted to build his own business, but didn't have a clear roadmap and knowledge on how to make it happen. And after working with us for 20 weeks, he was making over 25K a month while providing amazing results for his clients. And here you can see over 100 calls booked last month for his clients, hitting 20K a month, going for 30 to 40K a month, closing 5K deals. He booked 25 meetings in a day, still had 3,100 emails, absolutely crazy results for his clients and for himself. We have like 15 more of these amazing stories, but just couldn't fit them in there. Otherwise, this would be an extremely long video. And in case you think we cherry pick our best client wins, here are some weekly recap. Every single week we do a recap and people are just absolutely winning. People are making crazy money here, working with us, crazy results, crazy deals closed, making 10K, closing big deals, hitting 20K a month. People are just winning, like signing 10K deals, plus 3K month retainers. So signing like 30K deals, closing 5K deals, looking nine calls for a client, closing more clients. It's absolutely mind blowing. I see this every single day and it's fucking breaks my head how much people are making cash. Here's exactly what's gonna happen when you start working with us. You first know exactly what niche you should pick and how to leverage your previous experience and skills to cut a major part of the learning curve. You'll also learn how to create offers so no brainer people feel idiotic saying no to them. You'll also learn how to build funnels and sales letters so good that your sales calls just become a formality since your prospects will be sold before you even have a chance to speak with them. You'll be able to fill your calendar with qualified calls whenever you feel like it. You'll be able to close at over 25%. You will plug and play our service delivery protocols to ensure that you'll book calls for your clients and actually get good results. You learn how to solve other problems in your market and become an actual B2B growth marketing expert that gets paid like a plastic surgeon. You learn actual fundamentals and principles of B2B growth marketing that never expire like most of the tactics you'll find online. You will be able to hire a one terminator team to scale with while spending your time in the most profitable manner possible. You'll be able to reach at least 10k a month in less than 90 days if you execute properly and you will finally feel confident, fulfilled and excited about your agency since you have a predictable roadmap and method to scale it. So now you're probably thinking, okay, amazing. That sounds absolutely crazy. That's exactly what I want. But how does all of this stuff work? So before, when you wanted to find the best and most profitable niche, you'd have to do a bunch of research without any idea of what industries resonate with lead generation offers right now, what are the pain points and if it plays into your own experience and advantage. But now you can work with Agent Velocity IO and use our niche picking framework and training. Plus you will jump on a one-on-one -on -one call with us and we'll ensure your niche is optimal for starting out based on your unique advantages, what we know works well right now. This way you'll start with the best possible niche right off the bat and this increases the likelihood that you will succeed as fast as possible. You don't have to miss out on a lot of potential because you don't know what's the best way to do market research, best industries to be in right now and what works with your background. So we have a really good framework for it. Plus we will literally be on a call with you and go through all of these things. Before, when you wanted to craft an irresistible leech and agency offer, you would have to do it yourself based on information that everyone has seen online with no clear structure or just a generic offer that doesn't match your niche's market awareness and sophistication level or pain points at all. But now you can just work with us and use our offer structures, our training, and you will once again hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with us and we'll ensure your offer matches your niche's desires, pain points, and sophistication levels. You already know what offers, timeframes, guarantees, and prices work. You will have a clear roadmap and understanding of your offer. This way, you don't have the risk wasting a lot of time doing a lot of useless work on your funnel, via sales, cold email, and calls just to find out your offer doesn't resonate with your niche so they'll never buy it. You also don't need to take a risk of making an offer that you can't fulfill. So literally extremely, extremely hard to fail when you get the first two steps nailed in like that. Also before, when you wanted to create a high converting funnel with nurturing via sales, you would have to build your funnel yourself using templates you have seen online. Building the actual landing page is easy and simple. So you will be able to do that, but trying to create a VSL yourself increases the risk of missing out on a lot of revenue since your VSL is unclear, doesn't light up your prospects and does a bad job in nurturing. But now you can just work with us and use our landing page and VSL scripts and templates. We'll also overview, give feedback and edit your landing 
page and VSL until it is perfect for recording. This way, you don't have to waste any time or potential revenue since your VSL is crafted the right way to connect your niche with your offer. Also, your cold email campaigns will work way better and you can just jump on calls with pre sold prospects and reap the rewards. I'm not even kidding. I have spent over $50,000 in VSL training and coaching and I have created the frameworks on exactly what I have learned here. So we have a really, really in-depth specific protocol. And here, just one of our customers, Kai, sent us a VSL review. I sent him a 14-minute loom and he said, absolutely agree with your points, Levy. Appreciate the way you give feedback to you. Make it easy and understandable. I'll crack those changes. So once again, you will have a sick VSL. Before, when you wanted to build a predictable lead generation machine for your agency, you'd have to learn cold email by yourself from Twitter, YouTube, or low prices courses and use cold email templates that everyone else has used. And you'd end up reaching out to low quality clients with the same templates that everyone else uses and spending a lot of time and money in the campaign to book one call from thousand leads. But now what you can do is you can just work with us and use already proven cold email structure. We have used to generate over $3 million in revenue for us and our clients. It's actually way more right now. You'll get the best way to scrape leads for our niche, structures on how to write email copy and tutorials on how to set everything up. You will also have my and my team's one-on-one -on -one support. We'll help you overcome all the obstacles, edit your cold emails and create a campaign strategy and A-B testing schedule for your campaigns to ensure that your campaigns will perform. And here's once again a screenshot from Josh Gray ripping over 2% meeting booking rate on the first email in the sequence. So that's probably going to be like 3-4%. And these are not easy meetings. These are meetings with like CEOs of $100 million companies. So we will show you how to exactly do that. Also before, when you wanted to build a predictable step-by-step -step sales process that lets you close at 25%, you would try learning a more efficient sales framework yourself by reading books, watching YouTube videos and taking calls. And you would end up missing a lot of potential revenue since you're building your process from scratch. And you would end up getting objections like, I have to think about it and spending time chasing after prospects. So you don't know the small nuances on how to prevent these. But now we can work with agentvelocity.io and get our step-by-step -step two call sales process and pre-made objection handlers. We'll also audit your sales calls for bottlenecks if needed. This way you can start closing immediately when you start generating calls and you can extract the maximum amount of revenue from the calls you book while not having to spend your time with custom proposals and follow-ups. And here's a great example, Damien, coming up with three months in AV for me, 16 new clients acquired since starting. So it is working extremely well. Before, when you wanted to deliver results for a lead generation agency clients, you'd have to handle your service delivery yourself with the information you already have. You could also buy low price courses or hire low quality VAs or white labor partners to fulfill for you. And it would take you months to find a good service delivery workflow. So you'd end up delivering bad results most of the time and not having any predictability in your service delivery since everything is mostly freestyling based on what you think you need to do for the first months. You will churn clients, feel like a scammer, get refunds and miss out on a lot of money since you're not able to get paid for your performance in the beginning. But now what you can do is you can just work with agentvelocity.io, get access to our code email assets and training, our service delivery workflow, plus our troubleshooting SOPs while having one-on-one -on -one access to me and my team. So you'll be able to get help with every single client and have us edit and give feedback on your emails and troubleshoot problems in your client campaigns if anything comes up. This way, you have the best possible chance to deliver amazing results for your clients as quickly as possible, build those amazing case studies and get paid big performance payments quickly. So for once again here, Daniel, closing Friday win, 45 calls booked for my branding client after 25 days since my campaign launch. Then before, when you wanted to scale your agency, you would have to create your own SOPs, hire someone to do your automations and hire team members on trial and error strategy from places like Upwork and Fiverr. And you'd have an increased risk on hiring the wrong players in your team and building systems that break under pressure, setting you back months in progress and losing a lot of revenue. But now you can just work with agentvelocity.io and get access to our SOPs, automation systems, system building frameworks and hiring processes. And we'll also get one-on-one -on -one support on systemizing and scaling your agency. We'll also help you train and hire team members for your agency and we will even help you find the perfect candidates through our networks and audience using methods that have worked for us so we literally have a big list of people we have already pre-interviewed and pre-qualified and you can just go there and just hire them based on what you need now if you wanted to do this by yourself you would have to go through months of learning via trial and error buy tens of different courses and spend tens of thousands of dollars on coaches and lose your mind over it but we are only small fraction of the cost while taking you there way faster and easier all you need to do is book a call with me or one of our customer success managers here. So you just go to agentvelocity.io and you will be able to book a call with us. And just remember that this is not a course or a community. This is a personal consulting engagement where you will leverage pre-created resources, daily one-on-one -on -one help, and our team will even review everything you do and give feedback on it. Of course, we have a great community. We just hosted our first live event in Estonia. We had like 25 people there. Absolutely amazing time for three days with all of our customers, just having good dinners, smoking cigars, doing keynotes, talking about business, etc. But that is just a side effect of it. This is mainly focused on you just getting results to our personal consulting engagement. That is what we truly care about. Of course, we really love
about the community, but that is what we will ensure we will make sure that you get results. Keep in mind that we only onboard 10 people every month because it is a highly personalized process for everyone. And we want to make sure that everyone that comes in gets the one-on-one -on -one attention needed. If that is something that interests you, just go ahead and book a call with us from agentvelocity.io. You might also have a few questions, or I'll just go through the basic questions that I usually get. This offer seems great, but sounds like it's expensive. I don't know if I have the budget for it. And yeah, I know that the initial investment of starting something new can always seem daunting, but instead of seeing it as an expense, see it as an investment. If you make 250k in the next 12 months of working with us, it will literally change your life. And compared to the price of the program, it is basically free. Most of our customers double or triple their investment in the first 90 days. You also might be thinking that I don't have a time to start building an agency right now. And yeah, I totally understand that. But the truth is that building a business will always be hectic in the beginning. And if you're unable to do so while busy, you will probably never be able to. By starting now, even if you're busy, you can take things step by step and gradually build your business. And also imagine if you start six months later, how frustrating will it feel starting then when in back in your head, you know that if you just started now, you would already be at 10k a month minimum. You also might be thinking, okay, Levi, will this work for me if I'm from country X, Y, and Z? And yes, if you have a computer and internet access, it will work for you as long as you put in the work. We have clients from US, Latin America, all around Europe, the UK, India, China, Australia, Nepal, Canada, and pretty much all around the world who are absolutely crushing it. So if you put in the work and trust us, it will work. You also might be asking, is this saturated? It's a great question, but it's not. A case study by HubSpot showcases that 63% of business owners say that their biggest struggle is lead generation. The only way you will suffer from saturation is if you send the exact same cold email to the same market with the same offer that others are using. We will show you how to adapt and think outside the box and find market trends and pains you are able to actually solve. You won't suffer from saturation. How much does it cost to run the system you teach me to build? Around 200 bucks a month minimum. Of course, you can spend a lot more to speed things up a bit, but we have had guys to take out a loan to work with us, start from zero or pretty much in debt and make 5k the next month. So we are for sure able to come up with creative ways to work with your budget. When I started with Legion, I was dead broke. And that is also one of the main reasons why I love the business model that much. It is cheap to get started with. You also might be thinking, okay, what if I already tried running a service-based business and it didn't work? To be honest, you were probably doing it wrong. There are a lot of small nuances and big strategic things you need to consider when building and running a service-based business. Most likely your niche and offer weren't picked right. You were approaching it in a way that didn't resonate with them. We have had guys come in who have tried to run a business for months or even years without any results. And after we have fixed a few small things, their business has blown up. Like remember Oliver, two years, zero dollars a month. And then in 18 weeks, 35k a month. Like that is the beauty of it. So yeah, you might also be thinking, okay, what if I'm going to school or working at a nine to five job? In these cases, you have to squeeze out some longer days, but the system we will teach you won't take you more than two to three hours a day in the beginning. When you start seeing traction and closing more clients, you can either pull through the long days, start outsourcing, automating, or you can just quit and go full time. All of those options work. We have had people working with us do all of those. Like we will quit schools, quit jobs. That is the coolest thing. Like one of our customers that I just met in our live event, he quit his job, moved to Thailand, living an absolutely amazing life. So yeah, you can do pretty much anything of those. Then you might also be thinking, what if I don't have any sales experience? So the niche, the offer and the VSL will do most of the heavy lifting. If those are dialed in, you don't have to be a killer sales guy to close deals. We will also teach you our two-step sales process really in depth and show you how to overcome all the possible objections in calls and audit your sales calls if needed. So you will definitely close. You also might be asking, okay, amazing. How fast can I actually start seeing results from this? 70 days if you're starting from scratch. If you have already something set up yourself and we think this is going to work, then less. And we have people who close 5k deals after three days of joining since they take action immediately. The main variable is your own work ethic and speed of execution. This is not something that will make you rich overnight, but just from the sheer experience we have had, we are able to get you quick wins as long as you just work hard. You also might be thinking, how long do you think it will take to scale past 10k, 20k, 30k a month? And it pretty much all depends on how much work you put in and how bad you actually want it. I scaled my own Legion agency to 44k a month in six months, and we have helped people hit 10k a month in their first month they work with us and 20k after 10 weeks. These are not easy results to get, but when your foundations are built the right way, only the sky is limit as long as you just work hard. You also might be asking, okay, yeah, what if my English is bad? Funny enough, most of the people inside the program aren't native English speakers. I'm from Finland, so when starting out, my English was horrible. So you learn as you're taking calls with prospects and with us. And also, it matters way less than you think. If your offer is good and the niche wants they won't care if you pronounce some words wrong or say something that doesn't really make sense. Okay, is this a course? No, it's not a course. We have pre-recorded materials, but it's not a course. It is a consultation program where we help you leverage the protocol we have built for getting these results. What if I don't know what niche to pick or what offer to create? And that is the least of your worries when it comes to working with us. We will help you with everything. We have the proven framework that we use and we will go through it together in the beginning when you 
come in. But if it doesn't work, the only reason why it would not work is if you suddenly give up, disappear and quit. And we have done this at this point so many times that it is not possible that it won't work. We literally have like 1,500 testimonials. We know it works, but it's going to be more on your work ethic. Of course, no matter what business you're building, there will always be unexpected problems that you need to overcome. But that's why you have us who are able to troubleshoot those things immediately. So you don't end up stuck spinning your wheels and getting demotivated. But if I'm already making money with an agency or a service, that is amazing. If you're under 50k a month, we will help you make more money by doing less work. And we have people inside who have already been running a successful business, but wanted to learn extra tricks and tips for scaling and making it easier to run. We have literally guys who are making like millions a year with their business and they just hop in to learn specifically the stuff that we use. It is extremely up to date based on what the industry is doing. What if I'm a complete beginner? Can I still join? No, you can't and you shouldn't. There are better mechanisms for you to make your first dollar online. If you have never tinkered with anything online, if you have never even tried to start a business or anything, I don't think it's going to be for you. And then you also might be thinking, how do I know you guys are legit? Well, at the time this of writing this, we have worked with over 200 people right now on this and have gotten amazing results. Our success rates are one of the best in the industry. We have literally checked this with people who know the biggest companies in the industry. And I've also done this myself and documented and shared my journey online for my followers to see. The main factor is my personal brand. It means way more to me than any financial gain. Like reputation is something that you never are able to get back if you lose it and it's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. But just looking at our results, that is fairly unlikely. You know that this stuff works. And I've also been featured on Yahoo Finance and other big publications. And you can just check out our story on what we do from here. And you also might be thinking, okay, guys, why are you doing this? Why don't you just keep the secret to yourself? But there's three main things. First of all, satisfaction that I get for making sure someone doesn't have to struggle for five years as I did. It's life changing. Second thing is the personal growth I have gone through doing this over and over again with different people is huge. I have learned new concepts about running a legions and agency, coaching and building a company through this time. I have literally like become a 10 times better business owner as I've gone through this because we have so many different customers. There's so many different pieces. So I just want to learn and become better. Of course, the more you learn, the more you earn. So that is my goal as well. And then the last is the community that we have built already is amazing. Online business can be lonely. If nobody in your close circle gets what you're doing, it can feel extremely lonely. If this was so true when I actually got to meet some of our customers and actually bond and we actually had like a really great time together. It was one of the biggest wins and one of the best things in my entire life. Again, if you're interested in working with us, please schedule a call from this link or just go to agentvelocity.io and book a call with us. It has been an absolute pleasure. If you enjoyed this, drop me a like. And if you have already seen a few of my videos, drop me a subscribe and I will hopefully see you inside Agents Velocity. Amazing. Take care. Peace.